Hi, I'm Rappler Entertainment Editor Marguerite De Leon, and welcome to the latest episode of Rappler Talk Entertainment. The film Plan 75 imagines a time when Japan implements a government program, Plan 75, that encourages its elderly folks to be euthanized to remedy an aged society. This very interesting film is screening at this year's Q Cinema International Film Festival, and we're very, very lucky to have with us today the director of Plan 75, Chie Hayakawa, and one of its stars, Stephanie Ariane, who plays Filipina caregiver, Maria. Welcome to you both. Hajime mashte. Hi. Um, so let's get started. Uh, for The first question is for Chie. Uh, in your film, Plan 75 is, like I said, a government program that euthanizes people. So that's a very compelling premise. How did it come about? Well, um, hello, um, it's nice to see you. And I want to... Okay. 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 Although I consider also the senior citizens as, as depicted in the movie, I was also compelled to create something due to how the society is now treating people that are, I guess, less, uh, less contributional, less contributing to the society, those who are pushed away. Uh, from society, and th that is also the reason why I have created this uh, this film. Awesome. So um, it makes sense to me that there would be a Filipina caregiver character in this film because it's very common for Filipino migrant workers to be uh, in Japan and for uh, caregivers to be a Filipino migrant job. So was it always in your plan to have a Filipino character in this movie? Yes, it's reality that we have the reality that more and more Filipino caregivers coming to work in Japan. But the main reason why I created this uh, character, Maria, the, the Filipino caregiver, is because I feel that Filipino people has a very strong uh, bond with family and the community, which we Japanese are losing in these days. So I wanted to make it contrast between these like masterful and very kind and warm characteristics of Filipino people and the with the Japanese who is relatively like apathetic and kind of cold to others. Right. Okay. So let's move on to Stephanie. Uh, tell us a bit more about your background as an actress and how you got the role of Maria, the caregiver. First and foremost, hello, nice to meet you. Well, for my character, Maria, she is a caregiver that moved to Japan so that she can help her daughter's medical bills. And for me as an actress, I started in Japan actually when I moved there when I was 18, but I didn't start acting until I was around 20 years old. I joined like different freelance agencies in Japan. And then from there, from one of my agencies, they gave me the casting of Plan 75 during a midst of like pandemic. How did you feel about the, the premise yeah. of the movie? Well, I'm, I really, really like it. When the first time I saw the script itself, I only had one page of the script. I was already drawn to the character and I'm curious of how it's going to play out, you know, because like what Chia said, our cultures are very contrast between Japanese and Filipino. So it's a, it's a very interesting take when it comes to these type of topics. So um, actually, uh, one of our reporters has earlier uh, interviewed you, Ruben Nepales. Um, he yeah. is based in Los Angeles. <laughs> yes, Ruben. So um, he actually mentioned in a previous piece that you needed a language coach to get a more stereotypically Filipino accent, So, which is understandable because you've been living abroad for so long. So what was that experience like to have to sound more Filipino? Like what was the... What was something that you learned to make yourself sound that, uh, yeah, more authentically Filipino, so to speak? Well, I think because I've been living in Japan for, I think, 
more than 10 years now. Um, when I had my table read when one of our producers, Alan Berg Ang, he said that my my Filipino or my Tagalog already has an accent and it doesn't sound like I live in the Philippines. And it's very important for my character to be from the Philippines, freshly from the Philippines, but my accent doesn't even sound <laughs> like it's fresh from the Philippines. I sound, he even said, yeah, I sound like I've been living abroad ever since. And so that's why we were able to have our accent coach, so David, and he really helped me a lot to kind of like bring back, <laughs> bring back the Filipino, the Philippine version of Stephanie. <laughs> so he just needed to tap in like the old ways, like enunciation, um, the pronunciation of our vowels, it's very different. Um, and so those are the things that, that I was able to implement in my character and also as well, like watching local films again to make to make my more my character more genuine and yes uh, perfect could for you the share story. like what what filipino <laughs> what filipino movies did you watch to get yourself back into the groove Well, so I was just watching bits and pieces in youtube so i was watching a lot of angelica panganiban and angel looks in movies you know like in youtube they have all those compilations and stuff like that and also uh, Angel Luxon also had a movie where she was a, care, a nurse, and so I also watched that. And also one of the one of my favorite ones that I've watched as well is um, that thing called Tan Tanhana by Angelica Pagamiban. So I was watching that. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. <laughs> so uh, let's go to, back to, to Chie. Uh, Chie, so Plan 75 is your debut as a feature filmmaker and it's screened in Cannes under Uncertain Regard. So it's also Japan's bet for best international feature at the Oscars. So that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, uh, accolades. So that's a lot of um, do you feel a lot of pressure? So most debut filmmakers don't get so much success like this early. So what goes through your mind when you realize that your film is um, one of the top films for this year? So it feels like I'm in a dream, like it's really unreal. And uh, until now, I can't uh, really understand if it's really happening. I couldn't still comprehend that it's actually happening. Um, did, could you share like a favorite moment you had um, when you were at Cannes? Favorite moment? It, it was the really first time for us to gather all the people from Philippines and France and Japan so we could meet in real at the very first time at Cannes. It was a, such an amazing uh, time. <laughs> How about the how about the reactions of the viewers to the film? Like, did you get anything, uh, an interesting reaction to the movie? Like, what 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 reaction do you remember the most um, from one of the film viewers? The, the most memorable reaction, and also there's so many reactions. Same reaction I got was um, the people who after watching the film, they said uh, right after they. Uh, went out from the theater. They called. They made a call, phone call to their, you know, parents, mother, or, or father, or grandma, or grandfather. Oh, that's that, amazing! Because if you wanted, to, um, that's amazing. Um, yeah, you you can only hope for your audience to have that kind of reaction to actually make them mm -hmm. uh, do something mm -hmm. about uh, their yeah. their issues. So that's awesome. So let's go back yeah. to Stephanie. Um, so have Filipinos in Japan or around the world gotten in touch with you after watching the film? Like same question as Chies. Any memorable feedback from your role? Well, for me, the most memorable one is from actually an LA management team in where they really they said that 
when they people that I've talked to that have watched the film, they said that even if I didn't cry, even if we didn't cry in the movie, they really felt it deeply and emotionally. And also that, of course, that they're very, very proud, you know, because most of them as well know that this has been my dream ever since I was a kid. So they're just very proud and to see me su su succeed in this, in this field. Awesome. So back to Chie, uh, what do you find interesting about working with Filipinos in the film industry? Because um, besides Stephanie, uh, you also, like you mentioned earlier, you worked with um, Allenberg Ang and um, uh, other Filipinos. So uh, is there anything that you learned about Filipinos in the film industry by working with them? Yes, and the co-producer Alan Bart An, I met him in 2014 at the Filmmakers Workshop in Tokyo, and we developed a friendship. We know each other for many years, and um, working with Filipino, uh, you know, producers was such a wonderful experience because they are so like um, um, helpful and supportive. They always encourage me. Uh, to make this film, you know, filmmaking is such a long journey, but um, because they um, they are always sort of besides me to um, help me to do the, all the research about the Filipino caregivers and all the giving me the all the feedback about the script. And I like the um, also the at warm atmosphere and helping spirit of Filipino filmmakers, which is really uh, fantastic. Awesome. Um, may I know if, uh, is this your first time here in the Philippines or have you been here before? Yes, this is my first time in the Philippines and I just arrived here two days ago. And it's such a, you know, I'm receiving this very warm welcome from all the people. I was so surprised that I feel like little people um, feel proud of this film, the success. So I'm so glad to be here and finally I meet the audience in Philippines because I think the Philippines is another home country of this film. So Stephanie, how about you? Uh, how long has it been since your last visit to the Philippines? Well, the last time that I was here was around seven years ago, but because I don't count the other one where I was only here for four days, five years ago. So it's been quite a while that I've been back, yeah. Um, uh, could I ask, like, what, what province you came from uh, here in the Philippines? Well, when I was, yeah, well, nung nakatira po ako dito sa Pilipinas, nakatira po ako sa Cainta, um, San Pedro Laguna, um, Paranaque, and also Quezon City po. So I really don't have a, like, a one <laughs> location because I, uh, yeah. I was living with... Um, a lot of my relatives and especially my grandma uh, who Chia san met yesterday as well so that was a very heartwarming experience for us oh that's awesome okay so <laughs> um yeah speaking of of your filipino roots so a lot of filipino actors have been making waves overseas recently so there's dali de leon in triangle of sadness mm -hmm. there's Suleiman cruz into the north and then mm -hmm. you of course in plan 75 so how do you feel about Filipino representation recently? Like, uh, uh, what, what, came, what went through your mind when you were doing the role, knowing that you were going to be representative of Filipinos? Yeah. Well, I think I was just thinking, well, well finally, <laughs> it's time, right? Because, you know, we, we Filipinos, we're everywhere in the world. And I'm very, very proud to represent an OFW because it's such a, it's such a, core in our culture, OFW people, and and I'm very proud because they are such hardworking people, and you know the the sacrifice that they make for their loved ones. It's 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 admirable, you know, and it's just great that it's it's a baby step because, as I was saying, when you go to a hospital, let's say in America, it's mostly Filipino nurses, and let's say if you watch a TV show that is in a hospital and there are no Filipino nurses, you you know that it's not a genuine, it's not a reality type of thing. So it's really nice that our stories are finally getting heard in the international scene. And for 
you know, different countries to learn about our culture, about us Filipinos and how and how amazing and talented we are and what we can offer to the international scene again. <laughs> awesome. So um, we're actually down to our last few questions, unfortunately. So Chia, um, what, what so far has been the most important thing you've learned about yourself as, uh, as an artist or as a director making this film? あの、アーティストとして、え、監督として、ま、この映画を作ってる中で自分が、ま、一番学んだこと、ま、気がついたこと、色々あの別々の国のウィズダムが集まってることによってあのさらにあのいい映画が作れるということを今回の体験したんですね。それが一番大きな学びだったと思います。so as uh, she says, hmm, I wonder what that would be. And then she said that this production is uh, a Japan, Philippines, and French uh, co-production. And so it involves different countries of sharing different wisdoms that each country, each representative has. And I believe that it's because of that sharing that uh, we were able to really create a great, a good movie where uh, we're, we, I, was, I was able to personally experience that process, uh, which I believe is uh, one of the biggest things that I have learned going through this uh, process or this project. Awesome. And how about you, Stephanie? Uh, what, what's probably the most important thing you've learned about yourself, especially as an actress, as a young actress? Mm, okay, let me think as well. <laughs> well, I think uh, making this film really made me realize and that I'm glad that I didn't give up because it's a very, it's a very hard dream to pursue. And it's something that not, not everyone one can understand why I'm pursuing it. So I'm just very glad that I stood my ground and really believed in myself, you know, because that's, I think that's something that, what I learned in this one, that I have to believe in myself first. I have to love myself first to be able to portray the character that they're giving me. It's it's a huge privilege for choose you because it's their story, you know, it's their creation, and you have to respect that. And for you to be able to respect that, you need to have you need to know yourself more, and and learn more about yourself and with in in this process when i was at a short time because i, I was only cast 10 10 days before reflect on the things on how i am as a person or how am i going to bring this character to life you know and also how as well like because we can't be my character from me so those are the things that i learned Great. Um, and I think it's great that you're also, I think hopefully this can help open doors for um, Filipino actresses abroad and um, to, to prove to the world that uh, we're good at, at acting at, at, at in the filmmaking mm -hmm. industry, um, not just as Filipinos, but as, as artists in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're down to our last question, unfortunately. So for uh, both Chia and Stephanie, uh, any upcoming projects you would like to tell us about or anything you would like to promote? Well, actually, I just started working on this new script for my, probably my next film based on my childhood. It's going to be my um, family story. Oh, that sounds exciting. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. And how about you, Stephanie? Well, for me, uh, I can't share yet what, 
what the film is going to be, but I just recently wrapped up another feature film um, shot in Japan, and it's a Japanese. Um, I don't think I can say anything, so <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. Um, and I also wrapped up two short films, and that's basically what I worked on recently after Mind 75. Oh, wow, that's so great. Okay, that's great. Um, that's exciting. <laughs> So let's not get Stephanie into trouble anymore. So uh, let's wrap <laughs> this up. <laughs> so that actually ends today's Rappler Talk with Chie Hayakawa and Stephanie Aryan. Uh, Plan 75 will premiere at Q Cinema International Film Festival tonight at 9 p.m. in Power Plant Mall. Please visit the official Q Cinema page for the schedule of the screenings running until November 26. After the festival run, Plan 75 will be shown nationwide in Philippine cinemas starting December 7, exclusively from PPA Studios. And I can't wait to watch it. So thank you so much, Chia and Stephanie, for joining us today. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you so thank much you. for your time. Thank you. And thank you, Yumi, for interpreting for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>